This video is going to show you how to manually update your Samsung Galaxy S3 to official Jelly Bean. You need to be on specific software, L13 or LI13 or something like that. I'll put it up on the screen. That will update you to the latest like LJ7 or whatever it is. I'm not very good at those. As you can see, I currently have Sonage Mod 10 on here. I'm going to use Titanium Backup and do a batch backup. Actually, let's just do that real quick while it's on video. Open it up, click the little batch icon. And then go down here to back up all user apps and system data. Oh, we gotta get rid of that filter. Or that filter is not gonna let us see all of our apps installed. That was because I installed the latest 4.2 uh, Gmail app. So, I need to go back to the filters. And I need to clear them and press the checkbox. Now I can go back to the batch backup. Or batch, whatever. And then I can click to back up all user apps and system data. And then press the checkbox. And this will go through and back everything up. And then I can upload it to Dropbox. And yeah, all my latest apps, all my latest progress in Ski, Safari, and etc. will be backed up on the SD card and will be uploaded to Dropbox shortly. Then I can put that SD card in my Note 2. And then I can restore all the apps I had on my Galaxy S3 on my Galaxy Note 2. This thing is so freaking awesome. Once it's done with the backup, then I'm going to hook my phone up to my computer and I'm going to flash it stock using MSkip's toolkit. I do have a video on how to flash the Galaxy S3 back to stock. If you want, you can pause this video. I'll link to that one in the description of this video. And that'll show you how to flash your phone back to stock. And then once you get to LI3 or L13 or whatever it is, then you can stop and continue with the next part of the video. Alright, so the batch backup is done. As you can see, it finished. And then if you're on the home screen, you can just press Menu, Preferences. And then down here you can enable Dropbox, Box.net, or Google Drive. And then once you do, it'll open up the feature in the Schedules tab. And at this point I'm just going to click Run, and then Log In. And then it's going to ask me for my Dropbox information, just press Allow. And just a matter of waiting. Right here it's going to figure out what files are different from your internal or external storage than what's on your Dropbox account. And it's going to upload only the difference. So it's not going to like start from scratch and upload everything just what it needs to. And on the computer I transferred over that L13, I'm sorry I'm saying it wrong, LI3 zip to this thing right here. That way I didn't have to use my phone because I'm not going to use the SD card that's in there. I'm going to use this micro SD card just in case something happens because that's 32 gigs and I only have some of that stuff on that SD card. <laughs> so if something happens to that SD card then I'm kind of screwed. At any moment now it should start telling us how much stuff it's going to need to upload. I have a feeling it's going to be right about now. <laughs> the Note 2 doesn't even fit in the video. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> It's gonna be me. <laughs> Come on, freaking sing the Dropbox already. You can do it. I'm about to take the SD card out of there, put it in my computer, drag it to the new backup folder into my Dropbox folder, and have it sync it manually using just the computer. Cause this is taking forever. All right, so it looks like it's gonna upload 446 megabytes. With my connection, that shouldn't take too long. On my Galaxy Note 2 here. I'm gonna get a speed test real quick on my Wi-Fi to show you. Tools, I agree, megabits per second. I'm using a quad core phone, so I don't care about performance, so I can max that out. Let's see what kind of speeds we get real quick. Download isn't too impressive, but I got the Xbox and like 19 different Android devices connected to it at the same time. Oh, yeah, that shouldn't take too long with that upload. Alright, so it finished. All 446 megabytes was uploaded. It says right there, finished, upload to Dropbox. Now I'm going to hook this thing up to the computer, use MSkip's toolkit, and revert it back to completely 100% stock. Because the update's going to check your system directory and make sure everything's there and the way it should be before it actually lets you apply the update. So, again, I'll put links in the description of this video to that video that shows you how to flash stock. One, two, three. So this popped up whenever I restored the LEN ROM that I installed when I did my video on how to flash stock. So it's going to reboot and apply this small 2 megabyte update, then it's going to reboot and probably try to install another update. We'll see. I did exactly like I said I was going to do. Mm. I used MSkip's toolkit. I flashed it stock without wiping anything, and then when it reinstalled the stock ROM, I immediately rebooted the recovery and did a factory reset. And then it rebooted and everything is completely 100% stock. And before I did all that, I reset my flash counter to zero using Triangle Away. 
This phone is completely 100% stock, as if I took it from the Sprint store and just unboxed it. So let's see what system we now have. We're supposed to have L13, or LI3, I'm sorry, before we can actually update. So I'll unlock it, go into the about phone, or about device, sorry. Finalizing update, successful, about device. We're using not the one we're supposed to be on. So it's going to have another update if we go to system update and then we go to Samsung software. Yep, it's downloading it right now. Restart and install. So apparently there's multiple updates we got to install before we get to the actual LI3. That'll let us flash this 348 megabyte zip in stock recovery and have Android 411 LJ7 or something. If I can find the LI3 TAR instead of the LEN that I had, I will definitely link to that in the description of the video. The Xander man was asking me why I chose LEN. <laughs> because that was the one that was on the forums. I don't know. It's just the only one I found that was a TAR that got you back to 100% stock without root or anything. All right, let's see which one we have now. Settings, about device, what, LG2? <laughs> Oh, this is just gonna keep happening. System update, Samsung software, downloading yet another one. This one's weighing in about 39 megabytes. This might be the LI3. Wow, that time is updating a lot more things. A total of 80. Now let's see what we have on here. LG8? Are you serious? 81.5 megabytes. This is ridiculous. This is why if I can find the LI3 TAR, I will definitely put a link to it in the description of this video. Eighty-two things this time. Now let's see which version we have. Oh my goodness, is this gonna be like an all-day thing? Settings. About device, and we are in LI3! Yes! 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 <laughs> if we go to Samsung's update, I wonder if it'll actually update. Because um, someone at work mentioned that they got the update on theirs. And update Samsung software. Check now. Sweet! You see that? It does not say that I have an update. And it's been updating over and over and over again, but it's not saying I have it. So, I'm going to reboot this thing into recovery by powering it down all the way. Alright, it vibrated, so it should be done. Now we need to hold volume up, the home button and the power button, and just keep holding it. It vibrated. Booting recovery. Now it should boot in recovery. We let go. Okay, don't let go. <laughs> oh, oh, you can let go. That's fine. Alright, so... Now we go to apply zip from external storage. You cannot use the internal storage. That's exactly why I took an old, slow, class 2, 16 gig SD card and put it in here. Now I'm gonna press power, and then it's gonna ask me where it's at. There it is, LI3 to LJ7. And then press power, and now it's gonna install it. We should not run into any errors at all since we have a completely bone stock phone. Of course, links to how to flash stock, links to the LI3 tar file if I can find it, uh, links to this LI3 to LJ7 update.zip. All links will be in the description of this video. Also links to follow me on Twitter where I post about new videos that are going on, what devices I'm interested in getting, and etc. Links to follow me on Twitter, links to ROMs, links to updates, even a link to a playlist where you can find nothing but Galaxy S3 videos. I have playlists for each device. I have a new playlist for my Galaxy Note 2, I have a playlist for my Transformer Prime, for my HP Touchpad, for my Galaxy Nexus, Evo 4 Delta E, my Evo 3D, just everything. Patching system files. That's pretty freaking sweet that it had like six different updates, but yet the freaking Jelly Bean update wasn't there. That's awesome because I was going to be a little bit disappointed if it said the update was available since I just 
downloaded it. Even if it says the update's available, it is better to download it, put it on your SD card, and do it that way. That way you don't sit there and use up all your 3G, your LTE, or your Wi-Fi to download it on your phone. Plus you're also killing battery on your phone. Your phone simply isn't gonna download a file as quickly as like down them all, which is an add-on for Firefox. There's just no way your phone's gonna download it as fast as that download manager could download it. <laughs> so you're killing the battery on your phone. I took the micro SD card out of my phone, I put it in a little full-size SD adapter, put that in my computer, transferred the 348 meg file over, and then put that in there. Patching non-LOS image. I think that's what that says. No, HLOS. Patching boot image. Unpacking new files. System links and permissions. Update done. OTA. Patching remaining file systems. Install from a secret complete. Applying update complete. And rebooting. Ooh. Looks like we just went from Android 404 to Android 411. That is exciting because I was having issues with the latest Science Mod 10 where if I went from LTE here in Kansas City down to 3G, I'd completely lose 3G. I would have to go into the settings, mobile network, and change it where it was just 3G all the time. Because if I set it to 4G, then if I wasn't in a 4G area, it would never go back to 3G. <laughs> So that was getting very frustrating and you couldn't update your profile, you can't update your PRL, you can't do any of that in Cyanogemod. Which is really weird because you can update your PRL and your profile using Cyanogemod 10 on the Galaxy Nexus. 87 things are updating and it's even got the new little thing which is like the font's different. So no more leaks, no more alphas, no more betas, no more stuff not working. This is 100% official stock Android 411 from Samsung themselves. Alrighty. We lost the little indicators that show us that data is being sent back and forth via Wi-Fi. So I know we're no longer on Android 404. Let's go to the menu, settings. Oh, different options in there too. Different options in here. Finalizing, update successful, about device. And you'll see right there, LJ7 Android 411. So your radio, everything is 100% official. And you can believe that I will have a new video on how to root the latest update very soon. So please, give this video a thumbs up if you want to see the root video. And if you want to see future videos in the Galaxy S3 and on the Galaxy Note 2. Again, please give this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It'll notify you when I post new videos, and trust me, every video that I post will be high quality and something important that I feel you should watch. And trust me, every video will be high quality and something that I worked pretty hard on. It will be very rare that it's not that case. Again, this is What Would Josh Do, and I'm out. Please subscribe. Jellybean!